gonna be making the, the roll pin punches. This is the one of the sample ones I had made. Uh, a little bit different. I'm gonna make this tip a little bit shorter, or quite a bit shorter actually. Uh, maybe a, I think about hundred thousandths I have on the drawing. So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna be making these. I'm gonna try to have time here to make a nice box, uh, wooden box to hold them. Take you over to the bench there. I'll show you the drawing. And uh, I borrowed a knurling tool, I should say. I was able to borrow an Eagle Rock knurling tool from uh, Ray Canelia, and we'll sh show you that real quick. Uh, I know you've all seen probably with those, but they're really nice. And uh, so I'll be able to do some real nice knurls. Uh, uh, so thanks, Ray, uh, also, uh, for uh, uh, helping out with the punches and stuff. I'm going to be doing uh, some uh, roll pin punches. Uh, so here's a, here's a quick drawing. Uh, what uh, the ones I'm going to be making and a little di dimension uh, chart uh, for each of the punches I'm going to make. So they're going to be knurled and I was able to oh, that's Roscoe coming for a visit. Uh, I was able to borrow uh, Ray Cornelia's uh, Eagle Rock uh, knurler. I went down visited him yesterday and uh, I was going to spend like 15 minutes there and I spent four hours there or something like that. So oh, we had a good time uh, visiting there in the shop. And uh, Phil Mundy ended up coming over. And he had a little work to do, uh, some parts he was working on. So uh, we watched Tim Mill and Ray did a little filming there. And we uh, had a good time down there. Uh, but anyway, so I borrowed a Ray's uh, Eagle Rock. I'll get first hand to try one of these out. Uh, for the punches. Uh, it should work out really nice. Ten times better than what I have. Uh, so uh, thanks Ray uh, for uh, let me borrow this. I'm over here on the lance lathe. I've got a half inch collet, if I see collet, in, um, and the collet closer and stuff. Uh, these are, this is what I'm going to make you make the punches out of. This is a, a W1 drill rod. Uh, these are drops I had uh, from my friend who's a machinist who moved to shop. And uh, these are this half inch material. I've already faced off and center drilled. Uh, the ends of them all. I just, you know, did did all, did all that, so they're ready to go in there, uh, in the chuck. Because I'm only going to be grabbing about a half an inch on the end here, and I should be able to get the uh, punch out of that distance there. And I'll have a nub on this end even, and uh, we should have enough material there to get the punches out of. Uh, it's a little bit extra work because they're so short. I wish I had a longer piece, but uh, I've got plenty of these, uh, so uh, that's what we're going to try to do. So this is my 5C collet. I just try to show you real quick. What I've done is you can see inside there, I put a depth stop in. So it goes in uh, approximately half an inch to hold the stock. That way, I'm not holding a lot, but when I have the forces of cutting and everything uh, pushing your stock basically into your collet, uh, it can't slip and fall back on it. And that way I'll have a tail stock on there pushing and keeping things tight uh, so we don't have any movement of the stock. Uh, this is a good way to deal with a short material uh, that you're only going to grab a little bit of. You know, you don't have that full length part of the collet, which is, you know, this much uh, grabbing it. So I've marked that about a half an inch. And that just goes right in against that stop that way. Then I can just lock the collet. Then the uh, you know, your live center can go right in there and have a nice pressure on it. And as you cut, your forces are towards your chuck, towards your spindle. And uh, you have, won't have a tendency to slip on you or anything. My plan is uh, I need to neural only uh, 1.85 inches. Uh, but I still need to turn it down. So I'm going to turn this whole piece down because all the rest of the diameters are smaller than the neural. So I'm going to turn it all down to the neural size. Then I'm going to come in 
and turn down each end but to uh, the next diameter which uh, is, is 50 thousandths smaller in diameter than the knurl and then I'm going to come in and knurl that and then we'll continue on uh, knurling down uh, the other I mean not knurling uh, cutting down the other portions I have decided to start with the uh, largest largest ones dimension is going to be 455 so what I'm going to do 455 so I'm going to set my micrometer uh, I, that's, this is a nice feature of one of these micrometers. Uh, this one's a Mitotoyo. And uh, I'm going to set it to 455. There we go. And then I'm going to zero it out to incre in incremental mode. Now, when I measure something, it's going to tell me the difference in diameter right off the bat. Then I just have to divide that by two for a dial setting. So I'm 44.7 thousandths uh, uh, large right now. That's 44 and 7 tenths. Uh, so 44 thousandths large um, on it right now. So 22 on the dial total, and I'm at, I should be at dimension. I'm going to turn this at 1,200 RPM. With a feed rate of 10,500. It's a couple of cuts because I'm just going to zero that. I'll zero my dial. I'm going to go in 12, and then the next cut would only have to be 10, hopefully. Give it a measure. Actually, the you know the, the neural is going to be down this in this area here, so we'll just measure there. So it's at 25 to go, so another uh, 12 and a half. Half a thousandths large, five tenths. So that worked out really nice, <laughs> and uh, so we're good. Give it a little mark. Uh, and then I'm going to go down 1.85 inches. Those are the two uh, major marks I need to know right now. So I'm going to turn this diameter down to uh, 0.405. We'll do the same on the dial it on the on the micrometer. Set it for 50 thousandths, perfect, uh, exactly, and that's what it should be. Twenty-three to go. Oh yeah, good fish. Yeah, right on money, only four tenths under. Perfect. Now we'll come down and we're, we'll do the same uh, down at the bottom here.
Walking it back and forth. Eight tenths over, yeah, we're good. It's good. So we're uh, really we're ready to knurl that. We have our full strength, uh, pretty much of the material still. I got the knurler in there. I loosened it up, you know, so it's open, so I can roll over my piece now. Uh, just for a note here, uh, these knurls don't have beveled edges. Uh, I'm going to show you this knurl. This is my knurler. I'm going to show you this. You see how those edges are beveled on the knurls? Right? Now having a beveled edge on the knurl allows you to run off the edge of your knurling spot and come back on nicely. Uh, these ones aren't beveled. I know I have a small chamfer there on the end of the where I'm, which helps. Uh, these ones aren't, so I'm not sure how well these are going to go on there if I run off the knurl. Uh, we're going to find out um, how that's going to work. But So I've centered the knurl up over the center line of the piece just by eye. Now, I've never used one of these, and the instructions are kind of shady, a uh, little sketchy, but we're going to put it on there. Give it a little tension, and uh, see how it goes. Lots of lube, they say. Flooded. So uh, we'll uh, keep it flooded with oil. I'm not going to let it run off the end. I want to keep going in the same direction uh, just because of backlash and stuff. So, because if you get even your backlash, could screw them up. So, we'll see how coming back over and rolling back into it. Like I said, because I don't know how well these are going to um, mesh. Um, I, I didn't really do any practicing. <laughs> Oh, that looks great. That's great. A couple, just two passes were, were good, and uh, I like that. Let's go a little farther. Well, uh, that knurler works extremely well, nice and sharp. I had to change the knurls to a finer knurl. Uh, when I borrowed it from Ray, and uh, let me tell you, those pins, uh, the carbide pins in the uh, knurls, that hold the knurls in, and they were a bear to get out. I mean, 
I was uh, almost didn't change them because they were so hard to get out. I had to use the press and stuff. And actually, I read online a lot of people have problems getting those out. Let me tell you, they are a bear. So <laughs> uh, I didn't even put them back in all the way just so I could get them back out again. It's not so hard. Anyway, that, that came out really nice, uh, just so you know. Uh, we're using a 33 pitch uh, neural. Nice, kind of a fine neural, so it's not too hard on your hands. And that's a. Uh, that looks like it's just perfect. I'm going to turn down a quarter of an inch here, down to uh, three, uh, 302, uh, take about a hundred thousandths off of this, 304, uh, and uh, so that I have uh, this diameter reduced because I need to cut a, a chamfer on the end for the striking end, and then the rest of the, the very end of the chamfer I'll cut on the other lathe. Uh, when we chuck it back up over there uh, for the second operation of, of getting rid of the end nub and and getting the end chamfer on uh, but we'll do this first chamfer but I need to turn this down uh, a little bit Well, now we'll cut the we'll get set up to cut the little chamfer on the end, 15 degree angle. Good. I just marked off here, uh, there, and down here uh, the uh, lengths of the dimensions. This first three eighths is going to be a taper. This next part is the straight section of the punch, and then the very end hundred thousandths will be the nub. So I have plenty of room here. I have an extra almost quarter of an inch. So uh, that's perfect. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to turn down the straight portion all the way that uh, that we're going to call for. Actually, I'm going to turn down to be close to that. And then, uh, then I'm going to come in here and cut my taper down so I can get a nice angle on that to blend it. And then, then I can just go on down and, and I'll do a finish cut pass on there. Here, and I need to take off 105 thousandths total. So... Uh, we'll take off, you know, like 45 uh, um, on the ha on the radius there. So we're down to close, and then we'll do the taper. The idea is to get a nice, you know, little taper, and uh, you know, just so it looks good. Oh man, I almost forgot. So I hit that with some scotch brite. That's all I did. It looks beautiful. Okay, so this is my uh, very special rig here. I didn't show you. I, I need to do the grooves in the handle. So this is thirty thousandths. That little tip, that's how wide that is. Let's see here if we can get it to. And we're going to go 15 thousandths deep with four grooves, 100 thousandths apart from the end. So we're just going to go on. I'm just going to line that up on the ends. This is there. 
dial indicator, you know, and uh, we'll come over 100. Touch and go 15. our little details this is just a high-speed steel uh, one I ground and worked on so that's stage one of the punch now I'll do uh, I'm gonna make all undo all these uh, up to this point and then we'll go to the uh, Logan lathe and we'll finish them off So there's the first process done. Uh, actually, I just finished uh, this one off so I could show you what it's going to look like. So uh, on to the rest of the other three and uh, we'll get them done. Well, I just saw I cut these ends off uh, on the little bandsaw. I machined these ends off and we're good. So I. Uh, so I cut the, that big end off. First I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this end up where we had center drilled it and put the chamfer on this end. Then I'll measure the length and and get the total length right and then we'll make the nub on the end. I made a little copper piece of sheet copper uh, to put over the, the knurl and holding the sixth jaw it's I can get it pretty round as far as uh, consent concentricity goes I can get it pretty good uh, may not be perfect but it's it's awfully close uh, sometimes I just kind of yeah, rotate a little bit but, eh, it's pretty good say I just whittle this off it's, it's, it goes pretty fast Now put a seven degree chamfer on the end. Comes out pretty nice. That's pretty good. Looks nice. I just slip it around up to the other side and we just flip it over, get it in there. It's good. First time I clean the end up, then I'm gonna measure it. To do the length. Oh yeah, right, right at the scribe line. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, we did. Yeah, 134. That's good. I'm gonna now. I'm gonna take the file. And I'm gonna round that off. Yeah. 
We're good. One done punch. It's kind of bright, huh? There we go. See the little nub? Okay, we'll uh, do the last two and get her done. Okay, I just finished up the four punches. These are uh, some of my screw-ups making the punches for what's in your box. Uh, several uh, knurling screw-ups. I had several of those. This one I was off on the diameter too much, so it really screwed it up. This one, I don't know what happened. And uh, another one here. I actually, I was trying to uh, recover a screwed-up knurling one and just make one for myself. And these other ones, uh, different issues, but uh, they were still not quite right. And I, but I was able to recover them um, so that I could turn them into a roll pin punch uh, for myself. Uh, so the knurls aren't necessarily the same length, uh, things like that. They're not, these aren't all the same diameters. Uh, the the pin punch ends are all right, but there's other various, other various issues. But I was able to turn them into some punches. I will uh, torch harden them up, and they'll be very usable uh, punches. Those are probably going to go in the trash can. Okay, so that was a bunch of little cutting and plating, planing, and we've got our top and our bottom for the punches. The punches are four, but be about the longest will be is four and a quarter. So that just be sitting right now. All right, now we're going to put some holes in it. Laid out and just kind of punched by hand. Uh, so I can uh, easily center up on the holes. Okay, we're all set to drill this an inch and a quarter. These holes, inch and a quarter deep. Using a brad point drill. I've already set the depth stop. Okay, box is done. I know I didn't show it all, but uh, we got a tag epoxied in the top there. Epoxy still drying. <laughs> dun dun. Two little magnets hold it on. Nice and snaps right in there. Hopefully the punches will uh, fit since I don't have the punches, but I have a couple since I and recovered a couple, so you know. They, uh, drop in there. Uh, this one's a little. This one's too long, so uh, we'll take that out. It, it 
doesn't sit over that one, but, uh, but yeah, the other ones are the right size, so yeah, they should all fit. Won't be full all the way. Will be a few extra spots, but that's okay. Somebody might want to fill them up.